These then are the factors of recognition. Movement, position, shape, shadow, texture, and color. Camouflage is a manipulation of these factors. For instance, here is a squad. It moves like a squad and has all the qualities of a squad. Position, shape, shadow, texture, and color. This is also a squad, but it no longer looks like one. All the factors of recognition which might otherwise identify it as a squad have been minimized. This squad is no longer an easy target and its ability to execute its mission has been greatly increased by the fact of its near invisibility. One of the devices which has been used to affect this camouflage is dispersion. Dispersion breaks up recognizable patterns. It may seem safer to be close to a buddy, but this is how it looks to the enemy. That's quite a large target, isn't it? The enemy could easily figure if he doesn't get one, he's sure to get the other. That's better. Now neither of them can be seen too well. Disperse, don't bunch up. What feels safer is actually far more dangerous. As you disperse, remember the next rule of camouflage. Make maximum use of the natural terrain for concealment. Sometimes you can hide completely behind a shrub, a log. or a rock. Sometimes complete concealment is impossible. When such is the case, hide as much of yourself as possible. Present the smallest target you can to enemy fire. And when it is necessary to use a hiding place like this as an observation point, try not to look over it. Doing so will just make your position obvious. It's much better to keep low to the ground. Look around the side. Even when you're behind a hedge or in the tangled undergrowth of a jungle, it is usually possible to find a vantage point or opening near the ground. That way you're not nearly as noticeable or recognizable. But sometimes you are presented with the problem of moving through open fields with the minimum of hiding places. What to do? The shortest route is right across the open field, but that's the most dangerous because it exposes you to possible enemy fire. So plan the route that affords you the most cover, even if it's a good deal longer. Once you're out of the woods, you won't have a chance to think about it. You've got to figure it out now. Where's the sun coming from? Where will the shadow fall on a pile of logs? A group of rocks? Or a clump of bushes? What is the most likely direction from which the enemy fire might come? Based on all these calculations, choose your route. Move swiftly but carefully from point to point until your objective is attained. Take care to avoid individual landmarks such as single trees, sheds or towers, narrow defiles, or haystacks for which enemy gunnery may have the exact range. 